All right, Dr. Ray Bear. Thank you, Jody. I echo the same thank yous as Chris had. Um, we certainly are thrilled to have the opportunity that we had this summer, every one of us. Uh, in my case, I'm not talking about something that's been going on for 50 years, but just for three years. Uh, you'll be getting a handout in a minute, and I'm not going to go over very much, but since there are many of you here that do not know what the Institute for Religious Liberty is, uh, I've put together a handout that shows you the flyers for the events that we have put on so far in the three years that we've had. And if you turn it to the back page, I'll be talking to this coming year uh, in a minute. But what I want to begin with is a mission statement. Is that what's up there? This one? Yeah. Okay. You'll notice where it says is to advance the American concept of religious freedom as an inalienable right and the protection of that right for all people. In my estimation, this becomes more important now than ever before. We are currently living in a society with very, very little civility, unfortunately, where it's almost impossible to disagree. But what we want to emphasize as a Religious Liberty Institute is that concept of civil dialogue. What I'm going to talk about in a minute is what I did this summer. I traveled to Washington, D.C. I traveled to Grand Rapids, Michigan, the three of the leading think tanks in the country of religious liberty. And I also interviewed every member of the executive committee of the IRL individually to see what they thought about our future. What had been, and, and I hope I'll be forgiven for the way I phrase this, but what had been a, a group of five white males is now going to be a committee of ten representing five different religions, including three women. And we have many ideas for the future that I'll be sharing with all of you as we go along and asking for your input, because we want the speakers and the programs that we put together to involve significant input across the campus, because the goal, again, will be civil dialogue. While I was in Washington, D.C., I met the lead author, one of the lead authors for this book entitled Deep Commitments to Past, Present, and Future of Religious Liberty. His name was Douglas Laycock, professor at University of Virginia College of Law and one of the fellows of the Cato Institute. What he said in his article he was talking about culture wars, and he said both sides seem to be equally intolerant of each other. And these attitudes make it very difficult to protect religious liberty. He then added the First Amendment right should not be partisan. It should not be part of a party line. But religious liberty is in great danger of becoming just that. So in the conversations that I had this summer, This will be the uh, committee that I've put together, the executive committee in an expanded version. Uh, this is the event I want to mention for the beginning of this year. Uh, we started last year with not one event a year. When I started as a director, the idea was I just had to put on one event a year. So therefore, four at the time was enough. We decided instead, in conversations with many of you and the administration, that at the very least we wanted to add one major event in the fall that would be an interfaith dialogue. And as you'll see by looking at last fall's event, it was an extremely successful discussion having Catholic, Muslim, and Jewish representatives from local institutions. This fall we will have another interfaith dialogue, and then in the spring, the Archbishop of Baltimore, who is the uh, departing chair of the U.S. Conference of American Bishops um, Ad Hoc Religious Liberty Committee, he's been the chair since 2011, uh, will be speaking about what those seven years have been like in, in the world of religious liberty. The irony is that he was a graduate of St. Pius X Seminary here in Northern Kentucky, so we're thrilled to have him back in Northern Kentucky. Now, 
Here was my objectives this summer. I want to interview each member of the committee individually, which I've done. Secondly, to visit the Acton Institute in Grand Rapids, Michigan, the Cato Institute in Washington, D.C., and the Religion, the Religious Freedom Center in Washington, D.C. as well. Uh, very, very successful meetings in each case. <coughs> what I talked to them about were three things. One, some help and some guidance in networking for the possible choice of speakers for the future. Trouble seeing which of these slides are here. Oh, this is the Cato Institute. Okay. That was my first visit. And they put together this conference in 2017. And out of that came possible names for speakers, themes for the future programs, religious and education, for example, as a constant battleground, the philosophy and history of religious liberty, public accommodations, what are the limits, are three possible topics for the future. Another one is the issue of religious literacy. The Religious Freedom Institute in D.C. is working with two states at the present time for the idea of discussing religion in schools from a constitutional perspective. And we're talking to a few of the people that you'll see in a minute that I met when I was there. Uh, here I am at the Cato Institute. Um, some of you may remember Ilya Shapiro, who was one of the speakers here last January. Ilya was my host at the Cato Institute and introduced to me several of the people who are the authors of this book and potential speakers at future events. This is the Religious Freedom Center, which is part of what's called the museum. If you haven't been to the museum in Washington, D.C. yet, it's an absolutely amazing facility. Uh, they had an exhibit on Pulitzer Prize winners that was absolutely unbelievable, as well as the most important photographs taken in the last 50 years, um, including the winner of the year in each year. This, Dr. Jagger and I were there. We met with a foundation that's looking into possibly funding. And the most important point we brought up, as you've heard in some of the other talks and what you heard this morning, is the emphasis must be on the students. So since we are the only institute of this kind in the country at a Catholic institution, why not involve students? So the idea that I tossed out to everyone that I met with was the concept of junior fellows. So I'll be asking many of you to help me perhaps be on a committee to choose students as junior fellows, to look at the criteria, to look at what some of these students might do, get them involved in some research, uh, possibly even teach a seminar for, for the junior uh, fellows. And most important of all, as I talk to these various institutes, every single one of them has an internship program. And I came away with a commitment that they would look at our students very seriously to come to Washington, D.C. for a summer uh, as an intern doing some work in the, their field of religious liberty in those specific buildings. Uh, here we are with a group that we met at the Religious Freedom Center. Uh, this is the Athens Institute. You may remember uh, President Armstrong talking about going to the Acton Institute this summer, to the Acton University. An amazing event where they had, I was told, a thousand people there from 18 different countries and 28 states, uh, 150 speakers, and it was a six-day meeting. Well, I've been promised that I can be invited to that event next year and hopefully we'll be able to attend that. Again, the concept is constantly to get the best speakers we can possibly bring nationally, to get our students involved, and finally, to just constantly keep thinking about civil dialogue. As I found, as I was looking back historically, Oliver Wendell Holmes in the famous Supreme Court case, Lerner v. New York, said, the American Constitution is made for people of fundamentally differing views. And I think the point here is that the Institute for Religious Liberty must, in that context, emphasize that the focus should never be on one person's individual liberty, whether that's you or me or the bishop. It should be on everyone's 
religious looking. And it is our goal as an institute to bring together people from different views for that significant civil dialogue. Thank you.